metoprolol side effects. My name is Dave. I'm a pharmacist. And after we talk about side effects, I want to talk about one specific mistake that could result in death. Metoprolol is powerful. You need to know how to use it. Before we do that, the reason you came to the party, side effects. These are the top seven side effects of metoprolol. Probabilities are listed on the right. First, you need to know metoprolol is a beta blocker. So it blocks beta receptors, in this case, in the heart. And what those receptors normally do is bind to adrenaline. And upon doing so, that activates the receptor, consequently increases heart rate, and increases the force of the heartbeat. Now, if you're blocking beta receptors with metoprolol, for instance, then you'll have a relative decrease in heart rate and a relative decrease in the force of each heartbeat. Now, the black arrows on the left-hand side are pointing to five different side effects here that make sense given that mechanism of action, right? If your heart is beating slower and less forcefully, then it makes sense, for instance, that you would have potentially low blood pressure, and low heart rate. Also, it makes sense that you might be tired and dizzy. And it also makes sense that if you're feeling tired and dizzy, potentially sluggish all the time, you might end up getting depressed. Now, some of these side effects pertain to breathing, like shortness of breath, wheezing, and difficulty breathing. And you might be wondering why that is. There are also beta receptors in the lungs, and if you block those then that prevents adrenaline from exerting its action. Normally, adrenaline would expand the airways, open them up, make it easier to breathe. So that explains that. The red arrows on the right side pointing to those three side effects, low heart rate, low blood pressure, and basically difficulty breathing. Uh, why am I highlighting those? Those are the least common among the top seven, but I would say the most important because they're affecting potentially circulation and breathing. So circulation, if you have low blood pressure, low heart rate, you might not be getting enough oxygen to your vital organs because the blood's not circulating as well. And the difficulty breathing, if you can't breathe, obviously, how long can you live, right? I think of the ABCs of first aid, airway, breathing, circulation. This drug can potentially affect breathing and circulation. Without these things, a person cannot live. Now, I don't want to scare you. Uh, these things can happen, but metoprolol can be a life-saving drug, okay? In patients with heart failure, looking at this study here, people who took extended-release metoprolol had a 38% decrease in cardiovascular mortality and a 41% 40, decrease in sudden death. Now, this trial, this study, actually was terminated early because it was so clear that metoprolol was saving lives, that it wasn't ethical to continue not giving the control group metoprolol. So as you can see, it can be life-saving if given in the proper circumstances. Also, you can do something. Like you have the power to monitor your heart rate and you have the power to monitor your blood pressure. And I recommend that you do that for sure. Um, and if your heart rate goes too low, I say less than 50 beats per minute, or if your blood pressure goes too low, like the top number goes below 100, then you should notify your physician and take action. Because if it goes lower, then that's when you could run into those problems. And we don't want to have to face potentially uh, life-threatening problems if we don't have to. Um, but just to point out, those side effects like trouble breathing, low heart rate, low blood pressure, those are not necessarily fatal. They, ha they have the potential to be fatal if ignored. But there are things we can do. Trouble breathing, we can give you albuterol. Low heart rate, we can give you atropine. Low blood pressure, we can give you dopamine. There are different things we can do to correct those things and keep you stable so that you don't have that life-threatening situation. Also, accidental overdoses can happen. So if you're taking more than what was prescribed, whether it's by accident or not, the chance that something is going to happen that's life-threatening goes way up, obviously. So have a good system in place. And I recommend a lot of independent pharmacies, they offer these uh, 
medication packaging services. And they'll put like your all your daily medications in an individual package and they'll label them specifically for that day. They'll put the date on them and everything, the day of the week. And you don't have to wonder, did I miss my dose today? Because that's the type of thing that leads people to taking two or three doses over and over. They can't remember. Did I take it? I can't. Let me take another one. I'm not sure. That's the type of thing that can land you in the emergency department. All right. Other side effects. Uh, I, I mentioned the top seven, but there are other ones. Drowsiness, insomnia, things that contradict, right? We mentioned diarrhea. We also have listed here constipation. You can see it's kind of a free-for-all. People report different things. Different things can happen. Cold hands and feet, leg swelling, confusion, short-term memory loss, fainting, nightmares, madness. No, I'm just kidding about the madness, but you can see a number of things can happen. Now, there's one big thing. I, I already mentioned this at the beginning of the video. I'm going to talk about it now. You need to be aware. Never stop metoprolol abruptly. And this goes for all beta blockers. If you abruptly stop taking metoprolol after having taken it for, say, whatever, like weeks, months, uh, that could cause a heart attack. It could cause ventricular arrhythmias, both of which are potentially deadly. So if you're going to discontinue metoprolol, or any other beta blocker, the dose has to be gradually reduced over a one to two week period under the supervision of a physician. So you need to notify your healthcare provider and you need to do it the right way. Um, otherwise, very potentially life-threatening. Um, now, why do I mention this? Nearly one in three people have at some time stopped taking a prescription medication without notifying their healthcare provider. Now, there was a survey done, over 3,000 people, and that's where this data comes from. So if you do that with metoprolol, you're taking a big risk on your life. Uh, also, for people with diabetes, there's a specific thing with all beta blockers, including metoprolol. Uh, it can mask, the drug can mask several signs of hypoglycemia or a low blood sugar, including the tachycardia and tremors that somebody might experience if they have low blood sugar. But sweating is not masked by beta blockers. So if you're taking metoprolol and you have diabetes and you're feeling like, huh, I'm really sweaty, but wait, I'm not experiencing tachycardia and tremors. Well, that's because you're taking the beta blocker. Uh, you may be hypoglycemic. You should probably check your blood sugar. Um, also, people with asthma or COPD, uh, these people typically rely on inhaled beta-2 agonists to dilate the airways when they're having trouble breathing. What am I talking about? Typically, that's albuterol, like Pro-Air, uh, Ventolin, those types of things. Um, now, for those drugs to work, they have to be able to bind to those beta receptors in the lungs, which are called beta-2 receptors. But if those beta-2 beta receptors are blocked by a beta-blocking drug, then it may be difficult to dilate the airways. And for this reason, cardio-selective beta blockers are preferred in people who have asthma or COPD. Now, what is a cardio-selective beta blocker? Well, metoprolol is one of them, okay? So I took the beta blockers and I divided them into these two groups. Cardio-selective includes metoprolol, atenolol, bisoprolol, and nebivolol. Now, the ones that are not cardio-selective, on the bottom there, non-selective, those are propranolol, labetalol, carvedilol, and sodalol. Those are non-selective. So if you have asthma or COPD and you're taking one of those non-selective beta blockers, you should definitely check with your doctor and say like, hey, what's going on here? I have this problem with breathing, i.e. asthma or COPD. Why am I taking these, you know, this beta blocker and not a cardio-selective beta blocker? Because that shouldn't be happening. Um, now, metoprolol, like I said, it is a cardio-selective beta blocker. So the daily dose is typically somewhere in the range of 100 to 400 milligrams. Now, give or take a little. So uh, it's cardioselective, but if you're on the upper end of that dosage range, like closer to 400 milligrams or maybe slightly above that, the cardioselectivity diminishes. So that means you're no longer just blocking beta receptors in the heart. Now you're crossing over into this into this zone where you may also be blocking beta receptors in the lungs. And when you do that, that's a potential danger for people with asthma or COPD. So keep that in mind and make sure your doctor knows about all your conditions and all your medications.
Uh, so another thing to point out, there are two types of metoprolol. There's Lopressor, the brand name is Lopressor. That's metoprolol tartrate. That's immediate release, okay? The other one, the extended release version, is called Toprol XL. The generic name is metoprolol succinate. The difference, the key difference is that the immediate release version is taken twice a day, usually. The extended release version is taken just once a day. A key thing here, if you're getting the extended release metoprolol, definitely do not crush the tablets. Because if you do that, you're destroying the matrix of the tablet. You're getting two doses, boom, all at once. That could be a problem. All right, that's it for today. Now, I just want to point out, I'm working on a book. Um, the book is for people who have had atrial fibrillation or SVT uh, ablation. So if you've had an ablation, a cardiac catheter ablation for one of those arrhythmias, and you want to prevent or dramatically reduce the risk of having another arrhythmia after you get the ablation, then I'm working on a book for you. I recommend you subscribe to the channel for that if that pertains to you. Um, and we, I will release an announcement when the book is ready. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.